When people think of early football equipment, the first piece of equipment that typically comes to mind is the helmet. It seems to be the most important piece of equipment, and as it's evolved over time, it has protected the brain, the nose, the eyes, the mouth, and even the teeth. Before the helmet in the early days of football was the nose mask. This was around the same time at which college football considered a heavy head of hair to be adequate to provide head protection. More information on that, football hair, in a video I will link to at the end of this one. I'm John Johnston, and this is Hardcore College Football History. Please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with other college football fans. Thank you. The moral nose mask was invented and patented in 1891 by Albert Cumnock, who played for Harvard. He created it for a teammate, John Cranston, who had injured his nose. Cranston had come up with a wire mask to protect his injury, but it cut other players, and they wouldn't let him on the field with that, so Cumnock came up with this bizarre but somewhat functional design. In the patent, it states... In playing football, although blows with the clenched hand are not permitted, it is allowable to push or ward off one's opponents with considerable force using the open hand. And in the excitement of the game, this allowable degree of force is frequently exceeded and injuries to the face and head are not unusual. There are also sudden pushes, in effect blows, administered by the shoulders and elbows, and a player's nose is sometimes broken, while injuries to the mouth and forehead are less frequent and interfere less with the continuance of the game. A player whose nose is broken is prevented from further play for the time being, the prominence of that organ rendering it particularly liable to injury, and the suffering which any contact therewith would inevitably cause putting such player completely at the mercy of his p opponent. In other words, I suppose trying to play with a broken nose must have been incredibly painful, which is understandable. I can't imagine playing football with a broken nose in the first place, but they were apparently much tougher than me. Cumnock sold the rights to John Morrill, who put it into production and began manufacturing these nose masks. Notice how the player held the bottom part in their front teeth. More on that in a bit. This is the moral nose mask as shown in the 1893 Spalding Official Football Guide, which states that it has been made of fine rubber and that no wire or metal is used. It provides absolute protection to the nose, also the teeth, and sells for $2.50, which seems rather expensive for those days. It would be available through the Spalding catalog for decades. Now, if you look through old college football photos, you can find many, many instances of players with these nose masks. Here's the 1895 Iowa State team photo where this guy has one around his neck. Here's another photo of decent resolution where the players have them. And here's what I think is a University of Chicago player wearing his nose guard rather proudly as if it were part of a mating ritual. Here's a photo from an auctioneer's website of a nose mask. This one has the owner's name, Walter Word, engraved in it, along with the phrase, look out at the bottom. You can find these nose masks for sale as antiques today at various websites around the internets. You'll notice that they have little holes in them for breathing. Then there's the strap that goes around the head to keep it in place. In the backside view, you have this little edge that sticks out that a player would hold in their front teeth. If you think about how they had to hold them in their teeth, well, at the same time, they're breathing very hard because they're constantly running like 200 plays a game. And it's constant hit, 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 mass play after mass play after mass play hitting the lines. So they're constantly moving and hitting each other with little breaks. And I, I can't imagine what it would have been like to try to wear this thing and hold it in your teeth at the same time. But if you're going to play with a broken nose, you have to have something. If you think about it, your nose and your teeth would probably be the first primary things you'd want to protect as a football player. Because you're constantly getting hit in the face. 
In fact, punching somebody in the face is pretty common. The patent reference earlier mentioned hitting a player with an open fist, which was not illegal at least until 1905. There was a lot of slugging with the closed fist. It was kind of discouraged by the rules, but mostly they looked the other way. The open fist, however, like I said, legal until 1905. Now, there were variations on the moral nose mask, such as this Victoria Batwing nose mask, but they weren't very common. In 1912, Percy Langdon Wendell, who played football at Harvard, patented a different design of the nose mask featuring two strips of leather that were held in place by the wearer's molars, their side teeth, as it references in the patent. The patent states, the usual type of these guards and masks, the upper part of the guard is held against the forehead by a band which passes around the head, while the lower part is held in place by a block of rubber held between the front teeth of the wearer. This feature of the device, referencing the moral ma nose mask, has been the cause of much trouble inasmuch as it brought a heavy strain to bear on the front teeth, which are ill-adapted to stand that strain and shock, which this guard is intended to resist. In the second place, the centrally arranged block effectively closes the mouth of the wearer so that there is a slight chance for breathing through the mouth without raising the mask. In use, this form of structure has proved to be a matter of risk to those whose front teeth might be injured and of danger and discomfort to anyone whose front teeth have already been injured. It is the object of my present invention to avoid the defects and difficulties herein before noted. I secure this result by providing for the holding of the lower end of the mask by means capable of being engaged by the side teeth, leaving the central portion of the mouth free and removing the strain from the front teeth. So you get an idea of the shortcomings of the moral nose mask and how the Wendell nose mask was supposed to solve that problem. Nose masks like this stayed in use until around 1912, maybe 1915 at the latest. So the Wendell mask came into play just as nose masks were going out of style. Because of that, there aren't many Wendell nose masks being sold as antiques around today. There were a lot more moral nose masks sold, and therefore they're more available as antiques today. Also note the price, 50 cents. The moral nose masks sold for $2.50. That's quite a difference. Changes in the football rules led to a much more wide open game where collisions produced much more force. And therefore, football equipment had to change along with the style of the game. In any case, the nose masks faded from popularity as other equipment took its place. Equipment like head harnesses and full helmets and shoulder pads and full uniforms. We'll be talking about that equipment as I make more videos as I plan to do in this channel. I hope you like this and I hope you've subscribed and stay tuned for more. Please share with your friends who might be interested in either history or college football so that I can grow. This is John Johnston with Hardcore College Football History. Thank you.